Greetings, citizens of Nerdtropolis. Sean Todge here, the mayor of Nerdtropolis, and on this episode of Real Insights, my guest is Simon Phillips, who stars in the new horror film, The Mousetrap. Simon, my brother! <laughs> so good to see you, man. Sean, do you remember me even? <laughs> of course. That's all. I that's so you're the only like Hollywood friend of mine I bring up. I'm like, I got a Hollywood friend. His name's Simon, and he's in everything. And I I love chatting with him, and he's a good friend of Nerdtropolis. <laughs> that's good that's better than my lawyer friend who brings me up all the time i guess <laughs> Feel this buddy simon he's always in some kind of legal trouble you know or he's about to be about to be uh but can you believe mousetrap is finally out man like is this wild how does that feel that it's finally out and people can uh experience this film uh nuts because it's been the hardest film to make um in a way that i never thought possible so uh the amount of lawyers sean and insurance guys and and lawyers and lawyers and lawyers that needed to be happy that this movie was okay was something I couldn't have even dreamed of. <laughs> Y'all were hard at work for this. Uh, how long ago did you know the confirmation for the release date? Because I know nothing was firm. There's a lot of, uh, you know, hoops to, to jump through. Uh, when did you it know? Was, yeah, when did you know? Yeah, I mean, we always thought we, uh, well, actually, we knew it was going to be July at some point. And then they moved July to August because of, they were still waiting for sign off things. But what was nuts to me was that the movie was ready on January 1st. So, so anybody could have watched it on January 1st. And it took from there till now, as it were, uh, for everyone to be happy uh, in the order that they had to be happy in. Um, and it, it still took a million years. I mean, not it's not that long, but it felt like a long time for us. Well, time seems to be flying, you know, it's finally out. But when the trailer for the mousetrap hit, hit the waves, hit the internet and it exploded, how did it feel to see that level of excitement so early on? And did you expect it to go viral? Uh, honestly, I didn't expect it to go viral, but I thought it would be, uh, I thought it would catch people's attention. I'll tell you why, because Mickey Mouse is just a global icon, isn't he? So, uh, yeah, and, we, and uh, as soon as we dropped the trailer, we were getting calls from like Australia, Sweden, Japan, Italy, you know, like we were getting calls from, you know, film companies in places that we'd never sold films before. So, so it was, um, and we were doing news interviews and, and stuff like that. It was very exciting. So, uh, but that was just a testament to the power of, you know, how, how wide, far and wide Mickey Mouse is a global icon. It's always trending. <laughs> you know, those two words yeah. are always trending. Uh, where did this crazy and bold idea come from? And when did you realize that there would be an audience for this type of film? Well, I'm sure you may have heard of the, there's a couple of guys, a British director that did a movie called Blood and Honey, a Winnie the Pooh um, horror movie. And that was a couple of years ago. So that's because Winnie the Pooh came into public domain. The book came into public domain. So they did, they had a, they had a great idea there. Uh, maybe not a great movie, but, uh, but a great idea, certainly. Um, and I thought that when Mickey Mouse was coming up, I thought that loads of people would do this. So I was like, I, I, I didn't imagine that we would be the only ones. And we were the only ones on January 1st, when we dropped the trailer, Sean, like we're the only people that had it. Lots of people then said, Oh yeah, yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm on, I'm working on one too. You know, no, I'm going to develop, but like, nobody had done it really. They're no, not taking any risks. And everyone was waiting to see what happens to us. They go, wow. These, and lots of people were telling me, you guys, are, you're never going to release this movie. It's going to get sued. And we were like, no, no, no. Like We've observed the copyright. Like We were talking about, I'm sure if you've uh, had a little look at the trailer, you can see that our Mickey Mouse doesn't look like maybe the Mickey Mouse you and I remember. He looks like the 1928 Steamboat Willie Mickey Mouse. He's black and white, doesn't have the white gloves, doesn't have the red jumpsuit. So... Yeah, uh, you know, we observed all that and it just took a lot of time for lawyers. When you're the first one, that's what takes the lawyers so long. They were like, man, no one has ever done this before. And you're like, well, which is what takes the time. And you're like, yes, we know that. But that's what makes it exciting is that no one's ever done it before. Uh, when you're first to do something, it's really impressive. You're the guinea pig. You're going to set a trend. Uh, horrors yeah. and slashers are such fun. It's such a fun genre. What were some of your favorite, you know, horror and slasher films growing up? So I'm a big, so I'm an 80s baby, but it means that I like, I love a lot of 90s slashers. So, you know, I was a fan of all those, um, you know, the Freddy Krueger's, uh, Jason movies, but like also the cheesier slashers. I really liked I Know What You Did Last Summer, Scream, you know, that that's my sort of era. Like I was growing up when those movies, those horror movies, sorry, were out. Like that sort of 90s slasher really was my thing. Uh, and I really, uh, I mean, so... If you look at this movie, you'll kind of be able to see that, you know, it's put in an arcade. We don't have cell phones. Um, you know, we've kind of, there's a lot of that sort of neon sort of stuff going on there. So, and I, I quite like that. So me and Jamie are both, both very big fans of that. 
Yeah, it takes place in an arcade. Was that arcade put in free play so y'all could play the games in between shooting? Uh, well, that was a great thing about the arcade that we didn't really realize is that during breaks and stuff like we had like a little, they give us little credit cards and we could just play the games for free whilst between, you know, so, so we played every single game for sure. Did you have a favorite game that you played that you're always just like hogging it and everyone's like, come on, Simon, I want to play this. I see. I'm a big fan of uh, shooting games. So any any variation, I mean, there was a Jurassic Park shooting game, there's a Terminator shooting game, any variation on the thing. And also, see, those are all throwbacks to my younger, you know, Jurassic Park and Terminator. They're all sort of 90s you know, movies. Uh, so, I mean, I played those way more than I should have, way more than every other cast member would like me to have. Not gonna lie, those two are probably my favorite arcade games. Even the OG ones back in the day, especially that yeah. Terminator one. That Terminator one was a smaller console, you know, with a smaller cabinet, and it was that one gun. So yeah, good memories there. Arcades are tons of fun. <laughs> Gotta talk about the long text intro of this film. Brilliant and necessary. Who came well, up with right, that so idea? It was when we first did the movie. Right now, I told you on January 1st, the movie was ready. Eventually, the lawyers were like, right, you have to have something at the beginning of the movie that says, this is not a Disney movie. Like That's like, legally, we should make sure that people know that, even though people will definitely know that. But you're like, okay, yeah. So they're like, so what does it have to say exactly? And they're like, I don't, just, you know, that it's not a Disney film. So and now, if you look at the trailer, it starts with, this is not a Disney film. So when we came to the, the movie, uh, Jamie Bailey, he, he, he was just like, kind of, what should it say? And I was like, uh, let me try and get some words from the lawyer. But it's basically this, you know, sort of, uh, and we were sort of joking when we were talking about it. And then Jamie Bailey went away and wrote that down, like the way that me and Jamie might speak about it, and wrote it. That's the first time I saw it. It was on this, like, by the way, it's generic space crawl. That's what we're calling that stuff, okay? that's It's nothing, it may look similar to other Disney-owned properties that you've seen, but it is not. It is generic. I don't need to be in any more trouble, Sean. So th that one is just generic space text. <clears throat> so. The first time I saw it, it was on that thing, and I laughed my head off. Because it, it's totally Jamie Bailey, so all credit to Jamie Bailey. I didn't even know he was doing it. Uh, I thought he was just going to come up with some boring wording of this is not a Disney movie. But he, instead, he came up with that uh, that little intro, and I was like, this is perfect. And we showed the lawyer, and they were like, uh, okay, yeah, all right, go on then. It, does, it still says what, you know, what we needed it to say, uh, sort of. But uh, he was like, okay. So I was like, well, we like it. It starts the tone of the movie off in the right direction. Yeah, and um, for the record, Simon had nothing to do with that intro. It was all Jamie. Lee, Lee, <laughs> if people need to somebody to to blame slash slew slash you know yeah, the Jamie, Jamie, Jamie. <laughs> He'll love it though. I'm going to send him this clip where I just totally throw him under the bus. No, nothing to do with me. I don't, I don't know what that was. That's great evidence. That's all you need. <laughs> That's all you need. Uh, the mask, pretty cool. Really looks like it would get hot in there. How hot does that mask get? This yeah, this mask, uh, this mask taunts me every day. So sort of, I've still got this guy right here. Ah, yes. Right. <laughs> um, it was nothing short of a living nightmare being in that mask because it wasn't really made for uh, t t for somebody to put on, if that makes sense. Or oddly, uh, it was made for like a mannequin. Do you know what I mean? It's it's not made for a human to put on, and that's really evident if you spend three weeks inside it. Um, so because it didn't have it actually didn't have a breathing hole and it's a really thick like it's a rubber material it's not like um it's it's very durable and thick stuff so we had to like cut a hole where my mouth was that's it didn't even have a breathing hole you know so so uh it's cut a small hole and during the course of it uh we had a couple of masks actually and during the course of it it got totally wrecked because i'm fighting in it and stuff like that so they're all specially made um Jesse Edwards, the production designer, she put the mask together, you know, sort of so, because it had to look a certain way. There was important stuff about the mask, it had to be black and white. He doesn't have any eyebrows. He doesn't have um, any, you know, it's black pupils, you know, sort of so. They're all to make sure our copyright. We're using the Steamboat Willie version of Mickey Mouse. Because Disney, I should say, Sean, still own all the latter iterations of Mickey Mouse. So you cannot do anything you want with Mickey Mouse. You have you can only do something with the Steamboat Willie Mickey Mouse, which is what we did. Well, that makes sense. Are we making replicas of this mask to sell for Halloween? Is this a new, you know, adventure I, I, maybe? It's, it's, somebody is. I mean, I, I'm not doing it. So I think I should have done. You know, we should have jumped on this a bit quicker. But there are masks on sale. Very expensive as well. To get one of these masks that we looked at up the other day. <laughs> to get one of these masks made is like five hundred dollars, and I was like, "Oh wow!" I'm like, I mean, it's not a cheap Halloween costume, and I was like, "But they are they're, at the moment they're specially made sort of masks." So the people that are making them, there's a company in Italy that are making them, and I'll tell you that right now. 
Well, if I see anyone with that mask for Halloween, I'll snap a picture and send it to you. And I think that's going to be the new, the new horror costume for this year with, you know, the Barbies <laughs> and the Harley Quinns and the Deadpool and Wolverines will have them in this mousetrap mask. Uh, well, I don't them. mind that at all. That's just like nice to live, fit in with that horror landscape. <laughs> yeah, and horror fans are always looking for something new. How did you want to approach the mousetrap to bring something fresh uh, to the genre while still honoring classic elements that fans love from like the slashers? Do you know what? It wasn't, there was nothing, I don't think there's anything fresh about it, I'll be honest. Uh, it's like all of my stuff was like right where, I mean, what's fresh is that with Mickey Mouse is coming into a horror movie. That's the fresh idea. But we we put it, we retroed everything else. Uh, the characters are a bit retro. Um, we, you know, the, it's a 90s slasher movie. So it should feel kind of familiar in a way, sort of, um, which is kind of what we wanted to do with this is like everything feels familiar. Like the movie feels like a movie maybe you've seen before in the past, you know, get people trapped in a, you know, maybe not an arcade, but like an 80s movie, 80s, 90s movie. And, and the fresh thing about it is that um, everything that is supposed to be safe is dangerous, you know. So, I mean, it's in an arcade. It's, it's an area of play that was important to me that we made it uh, somewhere that you would, normally speaking, you should be safe and, and now you're not. And uh, obviously a childhood iconic character like Steamboat Willie's Mickey Mouse should be safe, but it's it's not, you know, sort of. So all those all those things. I suppose that's our fresh take on something familiar. But I, I don't mind using lots of the familiar, just mixing it up in a different way. I love it because the arcade aspect makes it really fun. And you got all, you know, there's something about all the lights in the background and all the games and everything. And you got the VR stuff. So that's really fun about this film. Is there a particular scene that you can't wait for fans to see that haven't seen this film just yet? Uh, well, I like, I mean, I'm, I'm guilty. See, all, all the kids in the cast, all the young, my well, sorry, I shouldn't say kids, younger actors, because uh, I'm not 21 anymore, Sean. Um, you know, although you wouldn't have guessed that by looking, you know, but I'm not. So all of the younger cast, uh, they do all the heavy lifting. Um, you know, they do all the acting, all the storyline. I just turn up and have, you know, right at the end of the scene and kill, you know, somebody and stuff like that so i get all the really good bits you know i'm like the sh the shark in jaws you know i get everyone's waiting for me to come on they go well you know this is all good but mickey's about to appear and when he does you know he's gonna kill you in some horrible way uh so i i mean i love i love doing that because they do all the hard work and i just turn up and have a lot of fun i love that you're calling yourself the <laughs> the jaws shark that makes total sense that exactly. works that works brilliantly. Was there a moment during filming where, you know, a spontaneous idea came to change, you know, a scene or anything that made it even better? Or you kind of just stuck to what you already wrote and, and created? Or um, We knew a lot of what we were doing before we got there because we'd. Um, I wrote the script uh, when, when I knew what the location was. So I'd already seen the arcade and I'd been walked around it and uh, we'd done the deal with the, the people that owned the building. And we filmed at night, so we filmed when it was closed. Uh, so I knew the the arcade very well. Uh, so it meant that I could predict what all the killings were going to be, you know, so I was like, right, this person's going to get killed here or here or whatever. Uh, so there was lots of, uh, there was lots of, the spontaneity, I think, all came uh, from the little ad libs and dialogue and how stuff was going to happen, but no big changes in what, 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 what it was. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it was certainly a lot of fun because Jamie could, with his, uh, with his director of photo photography, I, was certainly it was a bit of a visual treat you know like everywhere you looked it was kind of neon lights and and you know that's that's there's a nice it looked like a music video a lot of the time so we like that any bloopers while you're you know donning the mask or anything like that maybe you can release some yeah. of that because i think there's maybe some trips and stuff with the mask i don't know there's a there's definitely a lot of me bumping into things because the mask is not easy to see it. so usually i'm like i stand exactly where they need me to stand and then put the mask on you know the, the mask is the last thing to go on i have all the other stuff because if I had to walk to that position, I'll be like, I definitely end up like, you know, there's a couple, there's definitely a few instances of me tripping out or turning into like one of the arcade machines and like hitting my head, which we should put together as a, as a reel. I should suggest this to Jamie. I was like, there's definitely a lot of that footage of me uh, looking really, you know, badass at one point and then looking like, you know, just, well, just stupid, really. <laughs> yeah, please release that. We got to see all of that. Uh, you know, this. This is going to be a new trend I feel like y'all are setting with this film. You know, what impact do you hope that Mousetrap will have on the filmmaking industry and kind of influencing others to kind of take this route and, and have fun out there with stuff we grew up with? Uh, well, you know, the next 10 years of um, of the filmmaking world, we'll, we'll have a lot more uh, stuff to play with. 
particularly in public domain. Like over the next 10 years, every cartoon character that you can think of uh, comes into public domain. You know, like all of the, you know, the, the big ones. But I mean, by 2034, Superman comes into public domain. You know, Batman in 2035. So you know, the next 10 years will be like really interesting to see what people do with that. Um, you know, you will be able to do anything. Um, you know, sort of. So it's it's people's imagination is their only you know limitation. Uh, let's, I mean, let's see what it is. I I don't know if it will be me and Jamie that does all these things. I I sincerely hope everybody uses it, and I'm sure that we'll be very impressed by what people can do. You know, sort of. Um, but this all started with uh, I don't know if you remember they uh, there was a couple of movies, Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. Uh, you know, like they started to mix these things up. You know, like sort of a while ago uh, with older you know, stuff that was clearly in public domain, you know, sort of new versions. Of that. But we've been retelling stories uh, for ages, you know, sort of, we just put different twists on them, you know, sort of. So, yeah, it's just it really interesting to me about where all that stuff goes. I mean, I'm very excited by it. And I'm really glad that, Simon, you and Jamie are the ones at the forefront of this, you know, resurgence of like really putting all your eggs in the basket and taking a huge risk and a huge responsibility and going after the biggest one out there, you know, to That's bring the thing. Somebody, somebody was saying to us about like, um, well, you, you know, sort of, would you go back? Would you do something else with a different character? And you're like, listen, man, there's no, you know, forget about Winnie the Pooh. You know, so there's only there's Mickey Mouse. There's no bigger cartoon character than Mickey Mouse globally ever. There just isn't, you know, it's like, so we don't, we won't mix with anything else probably because you can't go number one and go somewhere else. Yeah, as that. No, no. We'll stay. If we do something else, it will have our good old friend Mickey right at the forefront. Y'all were definitely bold. We got some big balls, I gotta say, to, to do this, and it, and, it, and it paid off. I absolutely love it, Simon. You know, we've talked many times. I always love everything you do. I gotta know what is next for you. What are you cooking up? What What do you got for us that you can uh, maybe I drop a nugget? Well, we did just um, as well. I don't know why they did this because uh, distributors are amazing. Um, they released a trailer for a movie called Silent Bite, which is a Christmas uh, horror movie uh, sort of about uh, bank robbers uh, that rob a bank on Christmas Eve and they they hold up in a, a motel, which is mostly empty, but the only other thing that's in the motel uh, is a bunch of female, rather attractive vampires. And it's good old-fashioned boys versus girls, Sean, and I'm sure you can imagine who loses in that scenario. Well, that's super exciting. I, I love every film that you put together, you bring to life. I mean, you're the hard, I think you're the hardest working man in the business. Uh, you have I, fun, I like you have a lot tell, of fun. I like to tell Jamie Bailey that all the time. <laughs> well, you love to have fun, it seems like, and this is really like your passion, which you can definitely tell every time I talk to you. Uh, yeah, definitely, mate. Otherwise, I have to get a normal job, and I don't know what that means. Uh, or what I, I wouldn't be any good at working in the grocery store. Just imagine, somebody leaves me in the grocery store overnight to restock the shelves or something like that. And when they come back, I, all I'd have done is just made a fort out of all the tin soups. Do you know what I mean? It wouldn't be, I, I wouldn't make it. <laughs> Well, you're doing really well now. Simon, it's always a joy to talk to you. We're definitely going to do it again. Uh, but Mousetrap is a must watch. Must watch. It's on VOD right now, and it will be on Blu-ray and DVD. Oh, you can't see that because i got my camera. But on Blu-ray and DVD next week. It's better when it's blurred. People are like, I must go have that. <laughs> what yes, is that? actually. And you, go, you can't see this till next week. And they're like, well, he's right. That You know, something's blurring it out. <laughs> Love it. Good. I deliberately planned that. Let's make sure that people think that. There you go. Thanks again, Simon. Always a pleasure. Thanks, Sean. Once again, this is Sean Taj, the mayor of Nertropolis, and stay tuned for more movie news, reviews, interviews, and trailers.